number one. Number one. Okay, if we have P, then we have Q. Let's say that Q does not happen, and our conclusion is that uh, P does not happen. So if P, then Q, not Q, therefore not P. Right? If P, then Q, not Q, therefore not P. And we want to assess the validity. Some of you already know, but um, we want to assess the validity of this argument using reductio ad absurdum. That part you might not know. How do we do this? Well, first what we need to do is we need to assign all of our variables. Um, so in here we have P and we have Q. The not part, we're not going to be interested in the negation. We just want the, the, um, the um, statement letter, right? So we have P as a statement letter and we have Q as a statement letter. Those are all the statement letters that appear in this uh, argument. The next thing that we want to do, so step one is to write down all the statement letters right, in the argument. Then this is just my, my process, and I, I use this um, uh, pedagogically so that it's easy for you to understand what the next step is. But I, you know, I would recommend you do this uh, in the beginning while you're learning how to solve using reductio. Um, we recognize that this is a premise, this is a premise, and this is my conclusion. I recognize that it's my conclusion because I have these three dots in a triangle. Anytime we have these three dots in a triangle, uh, it means therefore, um, which serves as an indication that it's a conclusion. So premise one, premise two, and a conclusion. So this argument has two premises and one conclusion. We recognize from what we said before that we're going to attempt to make all of our premises true and our conclusion false. So I write out my statement letters, and then let's assign true, true, false. We want this premise to be true, this premise to be true, this premise to be false. If we can create uh, a state of affairs where the appropriation of just one truth function to any um, statement letter, if we can do that and attain this, then we know it's invalid. If we can't do that, if our appropriation has to be inconsistent, our appropriation specifically of truth function to a statement letter is inconsistent, then, then obviously it's valid. So let's do that. This, this is going to be very easy to solve. Let's start with the conclusion, right? We want our conclusion to be false. So we recognize that P, in order for this to be false, has to be true, right? Because not true is false, right? Not true is false. If I were to assign this as false, then not false would be true. So it can't be that. We know then that P has to be true, right? Not true, substitute true for P, means that this is false. So that anywhere we see um, P, what we do now is we plug in the truth value true, right? Anytime we see P in the argument, we substitute P with true. So we know that this has to be true, right? We know that this P has to be true. Well, that won't be a problem, right? As I said, you won't know how to solve these arguments unless you've already mastered um, solving arguments and assessing the validity, rather, assessing the validity of an argument using a truth table, right? Now, in the truth table, we recognize that for a conditional, the only way for this conditional to be false is if I have a true um, antecedent and a false consequence, right? If it's true and then false, then everything collapses, then it's false. We know that this P is true because what's not true is false, so we've checked that off, right? We've satisfied that condition. Now, we go up here to try and satisfy premise one. We substitute in true for our for P, right? So if this is true, then we recognize Q cannot be false, right? If Q is false, then this whole premise becomes false, and we don't want it to be false. So we recognize that Q, in order for this to work, Q has to also be true. We know that, right? It's irrefutable. If we say that our conclusion needs to be false, then we substitute true in for P. Not true is false. So we know that P is true. If P is true, then the way that we have this conditional maintain its truth, there's only one way, is to substitute true for Q. Right? If we substitute true in for Q, if true, then true, everything is true. So we've satisfied this condition, and we know that uh, true is Q. Now we plug in true here, and we say true, well, what's not true? Not true is false, 
right? Well, that would be a problem, right? Because now it doesn't satisfy, right? It doesn't satisfy. The only way for this to satisfy is for me to say that Q, in this case, would have to be false, right? Q would have to be false on line two. So on line, on, and this would be premise one, P-R-E-M, on premise one, it would have to be true, but on premise, on premise two, it would have to be false, right? Not false, not false, it's true. So we recognize immediately that there's an error on line two, right? There's an error on line two, and insofar as there's an error on this line, we are um, substituting two truth functions, true and false, for one statement letter. You cannot substitute two truth functions for one statement letter, so we know that this has to be valid. We know that one is valid. How do we know that one is valid? Because in order for us to attain this invalid structure, we had to implement on line two, right, two different truth values for our um, statement letter, right? You cannot assess two different truth values for a statement letter um, because that's inconsistent. So uh, number one is valid. This structure is valid. Okay.